So I had a person that just sent me some properties earlier this morning, and I want to go through the process of what I do when someone sends me properties. I usually look for my own properties, my own off-market deals. I have my marketing strategies, but sometimes there are deals that people bring to me uh, that are worth looking at. So the first thing that I do is I want to verify that these properties are off-market, meaning they're not listed on the multiple listing service by an agent. If they're listed on the MLS, then I have, I'm an agent, I'm licensed. I can go and look at those properties myself and deal direct with that agent. I don't need someone in between. Plus I can get it probably at a better price. And the second thing is, is that most properties on the MLS are overpriced. So the moment that I see a property that is listed on the MLS, I'm not gonna be interested in it because most likely it's gonna be overpriced. So those are the first things that I did uh, when, when I looked at these two properties and I did verify that both properties are off market. So the next thing that I do is I wanna just kind of get an idea of the property, the area that they're in. Uh, so I'll, I'll literally put them into Google Maps and I'll get the aerial view so I can you know, make sure I determine and see are there any additions that have been you know, built onto the house. Usually if there's a flat roof, that's an, that's an addition that's been put onto the house. When the house was originally built, it has the pitched roof, but if you see a flat roof, especially in the back of the house, that's usually indicating some type of porch or something uh, that was enclosed and maybe even illegally added. I also will verify if it's you know close to the water, um, if it's got a pool and those kind of things. The, the aerial views are really helpful for that. Then what I wanna do is I sometimes will also even look at the area, uh, look up and down the street, just kind of see you know any other properties that are there. But most importantly, I really wanna start understanding what the after repair value is in that neighborhood. After repair value is what the properties in that neighborhood will sell at the top value when they have new roofs, new windows, new flooring, new kitchens, new bathrooms. They've been fully rehabbed and they're being sold retail to a new home buyer. That's what after repair value is. That's what every property that you rehab that you fix up and sell, you want to sell it at the after repair value. So to do that, I go to two places. The first place that I'll go to is the property appraiser site. The property appraiser site, if the property is in Broward or uh, Dade County, then I'm gonna go to the Miami-Dade property appraiser site that I have on the screen behind me. And I'm just gonna verify a few things, take a look at the property, when was it last purchased? You know, sometimes if I see that it was purchased a year ago um, for a price that's, uh, that's you know, a lot lower than what I am being sold the property for now and it hasn't had any um, updates or anything, then that's probably gonna be a red flag. A lot of times I'll just notice that it's been owned for 10 or 20 years and that's probably why they're, you know, somebody that the seller is motivated to sell because they've been living in the property for a while and, uh, and they're just ready to, to move on. So the next thing that I'll look at is I will look at uh, the, the comparables. I can go into the property appraiser site and I can use ReFX as well. ReFX is a great program for uh, using, uh, finding the, the comparable sales in the neighborhood. Uh, but I'll usually double up and look at subdivision sales just in case ReFX missed anything and look at the properties that have been sold recently. And when I get the addresses, I don't even need to use my license to go on the MLS, which I can to look at pictures. Uh, usually if you just put them into Google, if they were listed on the MLS and sold as full retail properties, you're going to see all of the pictures there on Redfin, Realtor.com or Zillow. So I'll look at the pictures and just kind of verify and say, okay, in this neighborhood, I did this for both properties. One was in Broward, one was in Miami-Dade. So what I did was I just verified they're both three bedroom, two baths. One was 2,000 square feet, it's a little bit larger. The other one was a little bit smaller, 1,700 square feet. Uh, they were both built in the 90s. And so when I look at comparable properties, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for properties that were the, built in the 90s, uh, run about t you know 10 or minus plus years, uh, properties that have uh, one, maybe 200 uh, plus or minus uh, same square footage. Uh, then I'm also looking at beds and baths to make sure that they are three bedroom, two baths. If I can only find a four bedroom, two bath, compare it with, then I just have to make a little bit of adjustment for that extra bedroom. So I looked at those properties and I determined for both properties uh, from the comparable sales, the recent sales, I only go back about three months. If I have to go back six months, I will. But if I can go back in the last three months, what sold in that neighborhood, three bedroom, two baths, same um, about the same square footage and, and comparable, uh, um, you know, year built. And then I determine, and the values on these properties, 
actually, funny enough, are about the same. They're about in the $550,000 range. Uh, one property is in Hollywood in that area. 550000 is the about the max that I'm going to get for the 3 2 1700 square feet. And then in the area that is in Miami for that three bedroom, two bath, 2,000 square feet, about 550, 560, I might be able to push it a little bit. Um, but I'm always also going to be a little bit conservative. I'm going to deduct just a little bit um, for any type of market changes that may happen over the next six months that it takes me to rehab these properties. So that's just a little bit about my process of how I start to, to, to look at what the after repair value is on these properties that are sent to me because that's what I use in my formula to come up with my offer prices. So if you're not an agent and you're not licensed, you can use the uh, um, property appraiser site. You can use Reifax and Google to get all of your comparable sales so that you can determine the ARV.